first thing you have to do is pick a piece of magnesium from your table. Um, because the experiment is comparing the size of magnesium to the amount of hydrogen gas produced, there are four different sizes of magnesium uh, at the table. So I'm going to pick the four, okay? After you get a weight on your magnesium, once you know how much magnesium this is, then you have to wrap it in a copper bundle, okay, in order to get it into the tube. So uh, probably you're confused as to what a copper bundle is, so I'm going to show you. You're going to use about that much copper. You're going to take your magnesium, whether your magnesium is a big piece like this one or a little tiny piece, what you have to do is sort of coil it around in a very loose coil. If you make it into a tight coil, it's going to take your experiment a lot longer to finish than everybody else's. So it's important that you don't make it into a tight coil. But I made it into sort of a loose coil. Okay, Before it was just a big long piece, now it's a loose coil. That helps it stay tucked into the copper a little more easily. So the thing that's going to be reacting with the acid is the magnesium. And we're wrapping it up in this little copper tail uh, just to hold it. The copper won't react with the hydrochloric acid. So all I did was take that and sort of wrap the copper around it sort of loosely. It's held in there. It's not going to fall out when I shake it. It's not in a tight wad. It's sort of in a loose thing. And then I take the rest of the copper and I make it into a tail. It kind of looks like a tadpole. It's like a chemistry tadpole. What you want to make sure is that this isn't so big that you can't get it into the gas measuring tube because the gas measuring tube is about that big. So if I had a big giant wad of copper, I wouldn't be able to get it in here. So it has to be able to fit. So once you do that, you're going to end up getting your hydrochloric acid and carefully pouring it in to the tube. And you'll put your hydrochloric acid in, then you'll put your water in being careful not to mix it. You're going to get it all the way to the top so that there's nothing there and then you're going to fit in your copper bundle with a tail sticking out. That's the whole point of having the tail is so that it's sticking out so that later you'll be able to pull it out. Okay. And at that point you flip it upside down and you put it into your water bath. Right. The first thing you're going to do is carefully pour 10 milliliters of 6 molar hydrochloric acid that you measured out into the gas measuring tube. And it's the thing going in the tube first. Make sure all the droplets get in. And then you're going to get some deionized water and now you're going to fill the rest of the tube slowly and carefully keeping it over that tray water and you're going to fill the entire tube up to the top so that you can put your magnesium that's wrapped in the copper into the tube then put the one hold stopper on the top. Make sure that there's some of the copper sticking out the top, okay, so that that's the tail holding it in, okay. A little bit of water came out there, but I'm not worried that I'm getting acid on myself because the acid is down here and we did it so carefully that the only thing up here right now is water. So you want to make sure that no air gets in there. So in this one, somehow I got a little air. You don't want any air in there because that air will end up taking up space at the top of the tube and you'll accidentally think that that air is hydrogen gas. So you want to make sure that you've got the tail sticking out and you put this on and there's no air bubbles in there at all. Okay, and You have your finger on the hole of that stopper and you flip it upside down and put it into the water in the beaker. That is exactly what we want. And now, I don't know if you can see on the video or not, but I can see little swirls of 
the hydrochloric acid dissolving and moving down in the water. So pretty soon we're gonna see a nice vigorous reaction with the magnesium down at the bottom. Now, you wanna make sure that this is not touching the bottom. You need to leave space so that So what we're hoping for is that as the, as the hydrochloric acid moves down and hits the magnesium, there'll be a chemical reaction, and the product of that reaction is going to be hydrogen gas, and the hydrogen gas then does not escape out through the hole down here. What it does is it bubbles up and pushes up and will push down the water, and the water will go out the hole at the bottom. And so we will be measuring that volume of hydrogen gas produced. Um, so this one has a nice vigorous reaction and the uh, hydrogen gas was being produced and it came up and it's filling the gas measuring tube and it pushed the water down. And so I'm going to show you how you, once the reaction is completely done, when you don't observe any more bubbles being produced and you've tapped and tapped and tapped, then I'm going to show you how you uh, level the water in here. Uh, in the leveling tank. Once the chemical reaction is completely over, there are no more bubbles, uh, you've tapped on the glass to get all the bubbles to come up here so that any hydrogen gas produced ends up up here so you can measure its volume. We have to do that tricky part where we're going to move this whole thing to a big tank of water so that we can level the water in here with water in the room and make the gas that's trapped in here, the hydrogen gas, be at atmospheric pressure. So, in order to do that, you're going to take your finger and you're going to put it down into the beaker. And let this come out of the clamp. And now I have my finger over the hole in the stopper and I am not going to let any of the water drip out because if I do, I have to start the whole experiment again. So what I'm going to do is lift it out like that, got it carefully, carry it over to this leveling tank and put it down in the water. Now, once I have the stopper in the water, I can let go, okay? I can let go because I, I'm no longer worried about the liquid dripping out. And what I actually have to do with this is I have to lower it in the tank until the level of liquid inside the gas measuring tube is at the same place as the level of the top of the water in the tank. And that's the tricky part of this. So it's tricky because it's hard to read the volume like this. So what you have to do is to make sure that the water inside is at the same level as the water outside in the tank. When you get both of those lined up, you then have to read the water level.